Good afternoon and thank you very much indeed for joining us here at uh, Kedron, the State Disaster Coordination Centre. To give you uh, an overview on what happened in the last uh, 24 hours, at Theodore uh, there has been some rain overnight but I'm uh, able to report there has been a minimal impact. Uh, we are advised that the electrical assessments are still ongoing in town at Theodore and they are progressing well and the Salvation Army has uh, established itself in Theodore uh, and is providing our meals. The Australian Defence uh, Force has uh, very kindly come to assist in regards to restoring uh, some of the water supply for the town, uh, which has uh, sustained some damage to the, uh, the water treatment plant uh, and mainly in the motor environment in that respect. And the repatriation of uh, Theodore has, uh, is commencing today. In respect to Condamine, uh, Condamine repatriation has commenced. However, I've got to say there is some restricted access. There has been rain, which has caused some uh, roads to be flooded again. Uh, however, they're working through those issues and uh, a majority of the power has now been restored to the town. And the recovery centre has been established at the uh, primary school. In regards to Rockhampton, Rockhampton uh, did peak at 9.2 metres and is currently sitting at 9.15 uh, metres and receding, albeit slowly. It is anticipated that the major flood levels will remain in and around uh, Rockhampton for about the next seven days. Now we say about because obviously there's uh, a lot of uh, impacts uh, on the environment there and that uh, could be uh, even sooner uh, depending on obviously the amount of water that's still coming. The, uh, there is some revised uh, figures in regards to inundation of homes. Uh, that has been revised from 400 down to 150 and uh, the officers do report that a cow was located alive on North Keppel Island uh, and it had uh, come from Rockhampton. Now that is a 20 minute boat journey from Rockhampton to uh, North Keppel uh, so that is an incredible journey by that particular animal. I am advised that the animal is alive and well. In uh, St George uh, there, is a there is a repositioning of resources there and a further 10,000 sandbags I, I understand is to be delivered uh, this mm -hmm. afternoon. Hydrology also has been revised and this has uh, been revised to a peak of below 14 metres over the weekend as most of the predicted rain for the area has now fallen further to the east and is outside of that particular catchment area. And looking at our weather uh, over, the, uh, over the next couple of days, we're advised that the uh, weather, uh, we can expect some rain anywhere between sort of 20 and 50 millimetres over the Burnett Wide Bay area. And uh, we're also expecting some small pockets of rain of about 100 uh, millimetres. However, I would refer all weather uh, inquiries to the Bureau of Meteorology site, uh, which is uh, regularly updated. I'd like to pass over to uh, Warren uh, from Emergency Management Queensland with a few details. Thank Thanks you, Alistair. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Emergency Management Queensland is continuing to work with other states and discussing the support that they've offered, but I can announce to you today that 23 SES volunteers from Victoria are arriving this afternoon and they will be deployed into the southeast of our region to assist with flood cleanup. Also, we have one person arrived today from the Ministry of Civil Defence and Emergency Management in New Zealand. That's a Ford uh, reconnaissance person. He's working with us now because on Saturday there are 15 other persons arriving from New Zealand. Uh, they are uh, quite skilled in flood response and particularly in emergency management. So we look forward to them uh, joining us. We're going to insert into their teams. We have four team leaders coming from New Zealand and we're going to insert into those teams local state emergency service volunteers to assist them and I guess assimilate them into Australia, uh, particularly our weather. The person who came forward this morning is quite um, concerned about how hot it is here. I'd also like to um, say that Emergency Management Queensland is involved in the coordination of um, state agencies and how we go about the donations that are being offered into those communities. And one of the things Emergency Management Queensland is pushing, and that is the message that we ask that all donations be given in cash to the Premier's Disaster Relief Fund. There was a press release um, yesterday from St Vincent's de Paul, and they stated that while they want to help people rebuild their lives, the best way to do that is with financial support. 
and therefore they're keen for those cash donations to go to the Premier's disaster relief appeal from where they can get financial assistance then. That financial assistance can then be given back into the local communities. So whilst people out there are generously wanting to donate goods, it's extremely difficult to get those items into the communities because of closed roads and all of the other issues with getting goods in there. So cash is by far the most effective way to immediately help people now who have been affected by these floods. Um, that is all, thank you. Um, in regards to I don't have the exact numbers yet, but if you were to contact the local disaster management group, they'd be able to help you with that. That's a very much tactical operation being run at that local level. So people have started they, I'm advised that people have started to return to Theodore, yes. So you don't know how many no, I don't, sorry, no. Can you clarify the law on forced evacuation? Oh, well, basically, uh, the issue about evacuations is contained under the Disaster Management Act. I don't have a copy with me now. But when a disaster is declared, the, the powers that are contained within the Disaster Management uh, Act and the provisions uh, do allow certain activities to occur uh, in a community, and that is readily available on the site. Yeah, but they include arrest? I'm not, uh, well, we haven't actually had any uh, situations where we've had to do that. Yeah, it's just the, the Mayor of Rockhampton um, has just sent us um, a media statement saying that people who refused to be evacuated are now appealing for food and water, um, and that, that he is considering forced removal. Well, I'm not aware of that particular media release, but what I will do when I leave here, I'll actually look that up and uh, talk with the officers in Rockhampton. <coughs> Again, that's probably more an, a matter for the local disaster management group. Have you had any, uh, you know, people that have any arrests, any requests for anything like that? Um, look, it, just in regards to that, I believe there was a, there was a person arrested for a break and enter offence, and that person, I understand, has received a custodial sentence. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have any other details on that at the moment, unfortunately, but again, uh, that's probably if you were to make inquiries with Rockhampton, they would have more details in that regard. Yeah. No, I, I think it might have been uh, overnight. No, I don't, sorry, no. Again, this, the purpose of this centre is about the strategic overview of, of looking at disaster from a whole estate perspective so I'm looking at quite a few areas at the moment. The rain that's, uh, I mean, you can't be that the rain that's arrived so far, is that happening? Um, the rain that, that has occurred uh, has obviously cut some roads, sorry, has cut some roads in Dolby, uh, in a Dolby area. They have reported the, the rise of some of the creeks and that's uh, obviously uh, made uh, life a little bit more difficult. Um, however, the officers are uh, using a workaround in that regard and uh, they're using some uh, helicopter assets that, uh, that they have there. Um, but we wouldn't anticipate that uh, that will uh, cause them to stop. They'll work through that and push on. Are you, you also um, going to um, worry about how they Yes, near Jandawi, um, the, the water has come across the road. We received that report this morning, but again, that's probably more due to the recent rain. And so obviously when that rain starts to slow down and the creek starts to drop, the highway will be open again. Are people still trying to drive through flood water? I haven't had any reports. In, 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 all, uh, in fact, uh, I think that uh, the community being outstanding now that they, that I think the message is slowly getting through is that uh, it is dangerous. And I've seen uh, some photographs of, uh, of people that are, are putting little signs on the uh, road close signs to say, you know, can, can you read? I think is, a, is one that's uh, on one particular website. So uh, the, fact that we've, um, and, uh, the fact that we've had no further reports has been very encouraging in that regard. How many extra police have, that would normally serve in South East Queensland have been sent elsewhere? Um, I don't actually have those numbers. The, uh, we have a cell that's looking at logistical redeployments and support of officers in the field. Sorry, that a cell. A cell, a, a planning cell, yeah. looking at fatigue and also uh, and supply for officers in the field. And uh, I would have to consult with them to get the exact numbers. But as requests come in, so that particular function addresses those and officers are sent to those areas because obviously uh, we need to maintain a fatigue relief for our own people, 
that are working in some very uh, hard environments and uh, look at rotating those people through. Well, my, my advice uh, from this morning is, yes, a cow was located on North Keppel Island. It was alive and well, and they believe it's come actually from Rockhampton. So it's a 20-minute boat journey, and uh, that's a long swim in anybody's uh, book. Do you know which property it came from? No, I don't. Sorry. No. no how would you um, probably if you were to inquire with the disaster, uh, local disaster management group in Rockhampton, they may be able to do that yeah, for you. But it is uh, rather, rather interesting. Um, we don't know, and uh, that's one of the tragedies of, of this, along with obviously all the other inundations and damage that's been caused. I think uh, the hardships right across uh, all, as all aspects of the community have been, been huge. Um, we haven't even been able to start looking at that aspect yet. I, I think that once waters go down, I think um, people go back, they'll see, uh, obviously, uh, see the effects of the, of the flooding. And uh, I would then say that we will probably get a, a true picture of what has actually occurred. Because we're seeing reports now of uh, road damage, of uh, rail lines uh, and being uh, scarred out, especially around the Alpha Jericho area. Uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, the washouts on the roads. So I think there's a lot more to see once the waters have subsided. Yes, sir. Go on. Um, you mentioned <coughs> yesterday, I think it was, that um, you were looking long term with the work group. Yes. Um, I think about 1,000 out of your 6,000 available might be deployed at any one time. Yes. That would mean 5,000 uh, not, not utilised. And not quite. There's another 5,000 who are registered state emergency service volunteers, but they are probably in some cases back at their workplace. Just to pick somewhere, there's a whole bunch of those people in Normanton, but we're not bringing them out to do anything. They're staying in Normanton for what might happen in the Gulf. So yes, 5,000, but they're not available for deployment. But how many would be practically available for deployment that haven't deployed yet? I would think there's probably another couple of hundred we could call on who are have. Yep. Most of these volunteers have jobs and uh, they have lives as well. So during the day, uh, they just may not be available. But don't they get rated? There's no work time? Yes, uh, that's correct. And there's a process yeah. in place where they can talk to their employer to mm. see whether they can get off work to actually do this. Some cases that happens, other cases it can't happen. So potentially you'd be talking a lot more than a couple of hundred that could be available for the Yes, correct. Not so much this operation. This operation will go on, we think, for another couple of weeks during the cleanup. But this is the beginning of the wet season. So we are managing ourselves now so that we don't suffer fatigue early and we're still available and capable to deal with what happens in February and March. We are speaking to Tasmania and South Australia and we've accepted their offer, but not just yet. We have sufficient people to do what needs to be done right now. And again, they're a sort of a reserve which can come along if another event happens, and we suspect it will, sometime before the end of the wet season. Um, no, no, not at this stage. Um, if the use of interstate internet, a, a boost to creating awareness and empathy throughout the state. Yes, it is, and that is exactly why the Association of State Emergency Services have a protocol drawn up between all states and agreed to by all states, and it is about mutual support. It works in two ways, I would suggest. One is, it's, it is a support that we obviously need, but it's all about learning as well. We can learn from each other. So it's a good opportunity to bring people in to see how we do business and to learn from them as well. I suspect it will. Uh, this is through you people is receiving a lot of uh, a press and a lot of acknowledgement about the work done by volunteers. And a good for instance is we're just today saying goodbye to five Victorian emergency management specialists who've been in our coordination room. I suspect they've gone away after learning quite a lot and I know we've learned a lot from them about better ways to do business. So it's been well and truly worthwhile. Um, would, would that lead to the conclusion then that you do have domestic SES staff available to be deployed, but you're using interstate staff. 
No, no, it, it's, it's about taking up the offers that were made from interstate because of mutual support. There could come a time in the future where they'll ask us for support and that's what this is all about. It's about mutual arrangements. We do have other state emergency service volunteers throughout Queensland who could be available, but the logistics of getting people, as for instance, from Burketown to St George is not, is not easy. And more to the point, we need those people in the Gulf because it is the wet season, they could easily be isolated at any time. So we must strategically leave SES volunteers in certain locations. Well, I'm aware of a, a few SES volunteers in Catholic Queensland that uh, aren't able to uh, serve and if they um, follow their boss and at the last minute they're told that they're not needed. Um, and there, there's some growing frustration there that they pick up the paper and they see that they can be having four people from New South Wales it's not so much a matter of not needed it's a matter of yes we have you in reserve we know you are there and we'll take you when we really do need you somewhere right now we're managing who we need to leave in specific places and who we can send to other places thank you Uh, there's no plans at the moment. Um, obviously there's a community there that's uh, been severely traumatised that needs uh, support. Our officers are there to provide support to the community and uh, we're leaving those officers in situ at the moment. But again, the amount of time that they'll be left there is a local uh, issue, it's a tactical issue that uh, the local police uh, commander will uh, determine. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.